Hello there and welcome to Foodie Legends, your go-to source for the best foods to eat around the world and its history. In our previous video, we made a stop in Spain to have a taste of their wonderful dishes. If you like your Spanish food journey, maybe you'll like our other videos too. So don't forget to hit the subscribe and notification bell so you guys can catch up to our latest food journeys. Without anything further to do, let's go! India is one of the largest countries in Asia and also one of the most populous. Because of its large size, it is no wonder that the Indian subcontinent has a diverse list of cultures packed within its lands. These cultures and indigenous groups are unique in their own right, making India rich in culture and of course, in its gastronomy. For today's episode in Foodie Legends, we are going to dive into one of India's culinary giants, the Tamil cuisine, and have a taste of their foodie secrets. <laughs> All right. Do you want to skip off meat for a while, but at the same time, you do not want to miss out on foodie goodness? Why yeah, so man. weak? So weak. Well, our first pick might just be the right one for you. Coming in first on our list is the sambar, a Tamil vegetable stew that is not only good for your sense of taste, but also good looking to the eyes and healthy for your body. Sambar is a Tamil vegetable stew, with a lentil as its base ingredient, cooked with peach and pea and tamarind broth. Sambar has a very ancient history. In fact, its existence has been so ancient that it's quite borderline mythical. According to the tales, there was a Maratha ruler named Sambaji. While the head chef of the palace was somewhere off his station, Sambaji was craving for a dal. Since he cannot find the chef, Sambaji took matters in his own hands and made his own dal. The culinary genius that he is, Sambaji added a little bit of tamarind into the pot during the cooking period. When the royal chefs realized what the prince did, they understandably reacted like this. Oh no! However, Sambaji's culinary experiment seemed to work just fine, since he loved his own creation. Since this very humble person, Sambaji named his dish Sambar in honor of, well, himself. However, there is a little evidence on the authenticity of this origin story, and it's treated more like an urban legend. A food historian named K.T. Achaya, however, states that the earliest mention of sambar in literature can be dated back to the 17th century in Tamilakam. Lentils is sambar's primary ingredient and a staple meal in South India. It is a good source of protein, which is why vegetarians love it so much. Nevertheless, meat lovers can enjoy sambar as well for its vibrant taste and color. Sambar in itself is a complete dish, a curry stew made of lentils, typical Indian spices, and an assortment of vegetables and turmeric that gives its glowing color. It is eaten with short grain rice and papadam, a fried flat dough. It is spicy and filling and nutritious, and that is the reason why sambar is the first on our list. Coming in second on our list is Chetinad Kazi, a wonderful chicken dish from Tamil Nadu, and a sure way to make your tongue fiery for the rest of the day, but no regrets because it's just so delicious. Chetinad Kazi, or simply known as Chicken Chetinad, originally came from the Chetinad region, a community of Nagarathas in the Sivaganga district of Tamil Nadu. The people of the Chetinad region had a cuisine that was mainly vegetarian, but the trading nature of the Nagarathas introduced new ingredients and recipes to their cuisine, and eventually, non-vegetarian dishes became part of the Chetinad cuisine and the Tamil style of cooking as a whole. Chicken Chetinad is a traditional curry dish and also a classic delight in Indian cuisine. The chicken is marinated first in yogurt, turmeric, and a spice paste made with red chilies, poppy seeds, 
coriander, cumin, fennel, garlic and onion, coconut and kalpasi, also known as black stone flour, a special type of spice in Indian cuisine. Once the marinating process is done, the chicken is then sautéed with multiple spices and then layered with water, letting the stew cook to perfection. It is then garnished with coriander leaves, served with boiled rice or paratha, a type of Indian flat bread. You can scoop the meat and the gravy of the chatinad kazi with the paratha or drizzle it on the rice. The fiery spiciness of the chetanad chicken is tempered by its creaminess. And with the rice of paratha serving as its complement, you'll end up the meal satisfied and sweating. A dive in India's cuisine will not be complete without featuring at least one dosa, which means thin batter-based dish. So, coming in number 3 on our list is the utapam. Tamil cuisine's answer to the famous pizza, although of course the two flat dishes are extremely different from each other. Utapam is a famous dosa in South India. Compared to the crepe-like nature of the typical dosa, utapam is thicker and layered with toppings which is the reason why it is almost comparable to pizza. However, what makes utapam different is its base ingredients. While pizza and other flatbreads are made with the usual wheat flour, utapam, on the other hand, is made with Tamil's signature ingredients, lentils. To make the utapam batter, a combination of urad dal and rice must be made with a one-third ratio. Urad dal is also known as vigna mungo. It looks like a mung bean, but urad dal has a black color and is usually used in North and South Indian cuisines. Utapam got its name from a combination of two Tamil words, apam and utia or utria, which means poured apam since the batter is cooked in a pan with a round bottom or on a flat skillet. And utapam's traditional toppings can be onions, chilies, tomatoes, coriander, bell peppers, coconut, grated carrots, or even beets. For a hungry Tamil who just woke up, the typical breakfast is composed of idli, which is a savory rice cake, dosa or an utapam, paired with sambar and some chutney. Not a bad way to start the day. Fried Chicken Most people love their chickens deep fried in hot oil. In fact, most countries have their interpretation of this well-loved dish. The Americans love it battered and crispy. The Koreans and Japanese like it coated with a special glaze and with some sesame seeds. Some people just like it marinated in fish sauce and deep fry with no batter, just the skin. Of course, Tamil cuisine has its own answer to the challenge. Coming number 4 on our list is none other than Chicken 65, Tamil Nadu's Fiery Hot Chicken. The origins of Chicken 65 can be traced back to Chennai, also known as Madras, the capital city of Tamil Nadu. Aside from this fact, there are many theories on how Chicken 65 was born. According to one theory, the first Chicken 65 dish was made using exactly 65 chilies. Another theory says that the meat used for this dish is from 65-day-old poultry. One theory even says that the dish was served with 65 chicken pieces. However, the most popular and most plausible theory of Chicken 65's origins can be traced to a place called Buhari Hotel. And it was its founder named A.M. Buhari who conceived this spicy fried delight. Whatever its origin may be, one cannot deny that Chicken 65 has become Chennai's gastronomic pride and a worthy one at that. The recipe for Chicken 65 may vary depending on the cook serving it, 
but its defining flavor can be attributed to the generous amount of red chilies. The boneless chicken meat is marinated in lemon, ginger, red chili powder, and various spices. It is then deep fried topped with onion or lemon wedges as garnish. While Chicken 65 is a good dish on its own, the recipe of this dish can be used for vegetarian options such as Paneer 65 or Cauliflower 65. Whatever pleases you is good enough. Coming in last but not the least on our list is the Adi Rasam, another festival dish that is a popular classic in Tamil cuisine. Also known as Ati Rasa, this sweet donut-like pastry is also popular in the Tamils of Sri Lanka and other regions of the Indian subcontinent. Preparing this sweet delicacy is a game of patience. The traditional preparation takes a week. The rice is first soaked in water and dried in the shade to be grounded into a fine powder. Sweet vellum or jaggery is melted in water until soft to be mixed with the rice flour and powdered cardamom to form a thick dough. The dough is then stored in earthenware for the fermentation process, which may take 3 to 5 days. When the process is done, the doughs are formed into small balls and flattened to be deep fried in oil until golden brown. Once the frying is done, it will be taken out of the oil and pressed again with a flat bottom bowl to remove the excess oil. During the celebration of Diwali, Adi Rasam is a popular dessert to be served as an offering to the relatives and in the homes and in temples of Tamil Nadu. Adi Rasam is served together with other sweets such as kokis and kavum and other sweet delights from Tamil's culinary delights. Thanks again for tuning in with us here today at Foodie Legends for our latest episode. I hope you enjoyed this video and got a nice taste of traditional delights that Tamil cuisine has to offer. Before you go, be sure to like this video and click the subscribe button for more delicious content every week. We'd love to hear your thoughts too so leave a comment below and let us know what your favorite part of the video was or if you want to just leave with a few thoughts. You guys are awesome. Thanks again for watching. See you on the next one.